The coronavirus shutdown. The governor tells people to stay home. You are safer at home. Staying at home will help us save lives. I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. Staggering job losses and economy in shock next. I'll ask an economist, will this get worse before it gets better? Plus, Workforce Development Secretary Caleb Frostman on what people who have lost their job should do now. And the shutdown hammers the food and beverage sector, the creator of Wisconsin Foodie, on how many of your favorite restaurants might just go out of business. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin, this is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us. The numbers just keep rising as coronavirus cases grow in Wisconsin. So, too, do the number of deaths. And now economic and job losses are mounting. Governor Evers issued a safer at home directive ordering the closure of non-essential businesses. About half the country has similar orders in an effort to slow the spread of the virus. But President Trump signaled that federal officials want to ease nationwide guidelines, possibly by Easter. With millions of Americans out of work, Congress passed and the president's signed a $2.2 trillion relief plan. It would provide direct payments to U.S. households and aid to hard-hit industries. It has been a lot and so fast. So we're talking about the shock to the economy today with Brian Jacobson, Chief Portfolio Strategist for Wells Fargo Funds Management. Brian, we really appreciate your time with this complex issue. So first of all, the Federal Reserve Chairman said we may well be in a recession. Do you think we are? I think that's a reasonable assessment when you see the initial unemployment claims numbers jump like they did uh, to over you know three million in one week. It's hard to believe that we're not. Uh, there are other indicators as well that we can look at. Um, there are a number of data gathering firms uh, that create what are called purchasing manager indexes. So they survey businesses and ask, "What's uh, business activity like for you?" And we just got a, a read for those for the uh, part of March. It's kind of a flash reading and then they'll revise them later as they get more survey responses. But even that indicates that not just the U.S., but globally, uh, we're in a recession. Um, and a recession is a broad-based decline in economic activity that tends to persist. I think it's reasonable to say that that's what we're going through right now. Has the market gone through the worst of this yet, or, or is this the kind of thing where it will get worse before it gets better? Uh, well, you never know until you actually get through it. Right? I mean, it's the year of 2020, and we know that uh, 2020 uh, hindsight is uh, uh, 2020. Um, but we believe that we are probably through this, right? It's all probabilities. You don't know for sure. If you did know for certain, um, the best you could expect to get on your investments would be effectively what you get on a risk security like a treasury security. So you kind of, as an investor, have to embrace the uncertainty and live with it. Uh, and so the way that we're looking at it is that we do believe that the market properly priced in that there is going to be a big hit to economic growth. But now what we're trying to figure out is what that rebound and recovery is going to look like. How long will it take for us to start to recover? And then how long will it take to completely recover? So we believe that we are through most of the worst of it, but obviously facts can change. <laughs> And, and more than half the states in the country have shut down non-essential business, just like Wisconsin. How is that impacting the economy? A lot of people are scared about that right now. Yes, and understandably so. Uh, you see the job losses, the fears that small businesses, uh, the bankruptcies that can happen because their fixed costs like utilities, their mortgage, their rent, um, uh, other uh, items, those don't go away when their revenue goes away. And so if you suddenly have the synchronized shutdown of the economy or broad swaths of the economy, uh, that gives people, I think, legitimate reason to fear. But that's where then the policy response becomes so important. We know that the Federal Reserve has stepped in with a number of policies and uh, Congress has stepped in with some policies uh, an economic relief package. And we believe that the policy response has been proportionate to the problem. And that's really important as far as when you're thinking through how long might this last and then what might that recovery look like as we're sort of in this dark zone right now. And when it comes to that $2 trillion stimulus bill, 
What immediate changes will people see? How long will it take for that to set in? You know, the nice thing about the design of it is that it does seem like it should happen fairly quickly. Um, so monetary policy, so what the Federal Reserve does, that can be very quick as far as identifying a problem, reacting to the problem, and kind of fixing some of the problem. They can't fix the coronavirus, uh, but they can fix problems in the credit markets and the financial markets to make sure that credit is still flowing. And it seems like the Fed has been very aggressive aggressive with that. On the fiscal side, so this $2 trillion stimulus package, a lot of it does depend upon how quickly can the Treasury get checks out to households? Uh, how quickly will they get these other support programs in place as far as distributing the funds to support states and municipalities, to support small businesses through these various loans that they're designing, and then to also support other businesses, larger businesses through the program that they have established with the Treasury. So there are a few different moving parts to this, but it does look like they should be able to act on it fairly quickly. Now, fairly quickly, my best guess is that it's probably going to be over the course of a couple weeks, not a couple months. Often fiscal policy, you know, shovel-ready programs, you find out they're not necessarily shovel-ready, and it might take a few months, if not years, to disperse those funds. This can be a lot faster, so we do find that to be encouraging. And still a lot of questions about those checks. People are calling the newsroom every day trying to figure out if they, in fact, really will be eligible. But that aside, I've heard some economists say that they're a little bit concerned about this $2 trillion in terms of that being a lot of debt for the government to take on. What's your view on that? You know, uh, there can be good debt and there can be bad debt. And in my mind, uh, this is a type of good debt to be able to take on where effectively you're borrowing from the future to get us through the present. It's kind of uh, what a lot of people have credit lines, uh, what, why they have those credit lines. It's to borrow from the future uh, to get you through the present problems. And uh, in terms of the amount of debt, I think it's also important to keep it in perspective with a uh, you know nearly not $19 trillion economy, uh, the $2 trillion stimulus, right, that is big. It's about uh, 10% of uh, the gross domestic product, so the size of the overall economy. But uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be a permanent state of affairs. It can be a one-time emergency measure. So uh, a lot of people look at debt and think this must cause all sorts of problems in the future. It does eventually need to be paid back. But if you can have better economic growth, faster economic growth, that can help cover over a lot of these uh, debt problems that uh, could be beginning to build. All right. Well, Brian, we really appreciate your insight on this. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Coming up, staggering job losses begin. How much worse they can get and how the state can help. Later, your favorite restaurant. Will it survive the coronavirus shutdown?